Welcome to Tell Me the Treasures. Today we're learning Sota page 35, which discusses the story of the spies that were sent in the days of Moshe. We know that out of the 12 spies that looked at the land of Israel or Canaan, 10 of them came back with an evil report. One fascinating thing that Talmud here points out is the fact that it says in the verse, they came and they went right next to each other. We learn from that that just like when they came back, they certainly gave an evil report. They spoke about how the land is filled with people who are dying. We find this land, there's giants, fortified cities, and here's its fruit. So because they spoke so poorly about it, just like when they came back, the truth is they had that same feeling about the land even before they went. It says that they went and they came, which means that it was also with this negative feeling, which means when they went to Israel, they were supposed to have an open mind. But instead, they walked in with their bias, with their preconceived notion of thinking that the land is not going to be any good. And when a person walks into something with that mindset, it doesn't matter what you see. You're only going to see what you want to see. And that's true when it comes to anything in life. If you're a person that has a negative attitude about something, if you don't like, for example, a specific politician, let's say, even if they do something which may be neutral or somewhat decent, you're going to still find the thing that you don't like about it because you're already walking in with that negative attitude, which is in itself an unfortunate reality. We have to look at things with an open mind and realize that sometimes things are good, sometimes they're not good. Sometimes people are good, sometimes people don't do the right thing. But we shouldn't just automatically make assumptions just based on what we see or what we think we're going to see. Another interesting point that's brought down here is that they decided to start off talking about, look at the fruits. And it was undeniable. They brought these huge fruits to, to the people to show them that these fruits grew in this land. And on, the to on this, the Talmud says, why? Why do they have to start off talking that way? And it says an unbelievable psychological explanation. It says that if you want someone to believe a lie, if you're saying something which is false and you want to suck them in, you don't want to start off with a lie because they'll immediately pick up on it. Instead, start off with absolute facts. Start off with truth. And therefore, once they see that you're talking the truth, they're going to say, oh, this is a pretty reliable source. This is a pretty trustworthy individual. And therefore, that's why they did it. They started off speaking the truth, and then they ended up saying, not necessarily lies, but their own interpretation, their own bias of how things, how things should be. And what's most fascinating also is that it, they said that one of the flaws is that people are dying left and right in this country. It's a terrible country. The life expectancy is, is terrible. Everyone's dying. On this, the Talmud tells us that God did this on purpose because these were spies. If you're caught spying in another country, especially the country knows you're about to invade it, they're probably going to either kill you or lock you up in jail forever. It's a huge, huge problem being caught as a spy. So God decided... What I'm going to do is I'm going to have great people die, including Job, Eov, during that time. There'll be mass eulogies. And therefore, because the whole country is going to be focused on burials and all these different things, they're not going to even realize you're there. They're not going to be able to focus their attention on you. So God actually did this as a favor. He did you good. He wanted you to be safe. He wanted to make your time in, in Israel as a spy in the most safe way so no one would recognize that you were there. But instead they misinterpreted it and said, oh, it must be that people are dying. And unfortunately we do the same thing too. A lot of times people do wonderful things but instead of us being grateful for the fact that they did something good for us, we turn it around. We say, oh, this was really not such a good or why did you do it this way? And that's an unfortunate reality, and we need to learn to be able to appreciate the good things and to be able to see it, even though maybe we want to rather see the negative and therefore not be grateful. Always better to find the good.